Welcome to the Scott Townsend Show, brought to you by Dietzo Man Productions. Hey, this is Scott Townsend. You're watching and listening to the Scott Townsend Show. And today I have with me, well, it's an honor to have with me. Uh, I've, I've had the opportunity of working with uh, Lieutenant Colonel Dan Rooney on several occasions in the past. It's always been an A-plus experience. Uh, if you don't know uh, Colonel Dan, he's a uh, F-16 fighter pilot. He's an author, a PGA golf pro, a speaker, a fabulous speaker, uh, founder of Folds of Honor. Uh, just completed a golf course with Jack Nicholas. He's a father of five beautiful girls and husband. And uh, welcome to the show, Colonel Dan. Hey, you know, it's uh, good to be with you, Scott. Always good to reconnect. And I would say, you think Iraq is scary, you should try to get uh, four girls out of the house. My oldest girl is a freshman at Notre Dame. But uh, it's just been one of those mornings, man, a real life <laughs> morning at the Rooney household. There you go. Um, and it's veterans, you know, in this Veterans Day spirit, it should be a, hey, Dad, thanks for your service. So uh, it's all good. <laughs> oh, man, kids make kids make it real, don't they? Oh, yeah, it's all, they make it real and about them. They're good at that, right? They're in the moment. All of us can learn from that lesson. But yeah. uh, So uh, just real quick, uh, you and I have, uh, in the past, uh, you spoke for one of the organizations I used to work for a couple of times. And it was a phenomenal experience. I missed the first one because I was sick that night, um, had the flu, and uh, had to stay in my, the doctor told me I had to stay in the hotel room. So uh, it's funny, a quick story. I went to the uh, uh, doctor's office the morning that you spoke to our group and uh, got checked out and medicine and all that. So I came back to the hotel and I got into the elevator hoping I was going to be by myself. And just as the doors closed, a guy uh, jumped in at the last second and he was holding your book, uh, A Patriot's Calling. And uh, he goes, man, that was the best message I've ever heard. <laughs> and he didn't know I was with the group, you know? And uh, I said, oh, really? What, uh, who was it? He's like, oh, this uh, fighter pilot. And I'm telling you what, I got his book and I can't wait to get into this. That was awesome. And it, that made me feel really good because that's exactly what I was hoping would happen, you know? Uh, so, yeah, hosting really... the event. yeah, absolutely. But uh, so now you've got uh, the reason why we're uh, getting together today um, is this, uh, you've got a new book out. Uh, you, you, your first book, A Patriot's Calling, which I read and uh, you signed, and I really appreciate that. Um, I gave it to my son to read actually. And then uh, you've got this new book, uh, Fly Into the Wind. And I just want to say thanks to your staff, uh, Glenn Greenspan and uh, Sarah McCutcheon. They were super great to work with. And Allison uh, Hinchcliffe, I think it is. Yeah, um, and Harper Collins. yep. Yeah, uh, who gave us, uh, got me a PDF to read. And I must say that that's the first time I've ever read a book in one day. And that was yesterday. <laughs> Trying to get ready for the interview, you know. So, uh, yeah, that was a first for me as well. So let's get into the book here a little bit. Uh, the, the Patriots Calling, I was thinking about this, and I'll shut up here because this, this, this show is all about you. I promise I'll shut up. The first book seemed to be more, autobiograph autobiograph more of an autobiography, and this one seems to be more of a therapy session. Is that... Would that be right? That, that's fair. And it's chronological too. I would say that my autobiography, when a Patriot's calling knocked off and I printed that and self published it, right. Nobody would publish it. Um, it had been uh, pretty much uh, all roses since, uh, since that point, then that, you know, the season of life really hit um, where there was tremendous challenge in, in my life personally and uh, that was, you know, the storm in which I, I wrote Fly Into the Wind. It initially was a, was a journal and evolved into, um, into a book. Um, but basically, you know, Fly Into the Wind, I, you know, I engineered a, a code of living for myself to ensure that I was able to, you know, find fulfillment every day. Happiness wasn't attainable. And, you know, honestly, I think that's an emotion that people put way too much stock in. Um, and what does happiness really feel like? Um, I can't tell you that, but I know what fulfillment feels like. And that is doing what you think God wants you to do on a daily basis in a repetitive format. And uh, so this, you know, the book, Flying to the Wind, is 
you know, the lessons I've incorporated in my life, obviously from being a fighter pilot and a golf pro. Um, but I really looked um, over this period at, at people that, you know, that I had admired, you know, my personal heroes and some I knew, some I didn't. But I mean, it, it, examples, I mean, it ranges back to the apostles in the Bible, you know, James and John to, to the Pope, to a Kobe Bryant, to a Jack Nicholas, to a President Bush 41, um, but was able to pull um, from, from their life, kind of their code of living and really structured this in a, you know, a beautiful executable way for myself, which I felt really called by God to, to share with others. You, uh, you have a, it's obvious in the book that you have a strong connection with God and, uh, what's, how did that come about? I mean, uh, it's, uh, there was a lot of page, there's a lot of ink dedicated to scripture and, uh, your relationship with your, the Lord. And so how did that all come about? Well, I think, you know, I've, you know, I've always been a, a Christian and, you know, grew up parents are Catholic and, um, have always practiced, right. But it's, it's the old adage, it's not the foxhole for me, but you know, it's the cockpit of an F-16. When somebody's shooting at you, 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 you tend to get closer to God, right? When <laughs> he lets you know that uh, you need him right now. And so it really was this, um, this, you know, this life storm that I, that I went through that my faith got much, much deeper. And um, I, I use the analogy in the title of the book, Flying to the Wind. And it's, you know, as fighter pilots, we always take off into the wind because we need resistance to ascend. And I think that are the, is ultimately the moments in our life where we really evolve. Um, winning is fun. Tailwinds are fun. But we don't really change. Um, you start maybe believing it's all you or um, life is easy. You don't depend on that rock. And, man, I, I was holding on for dear life. And as a result, you know, my just my relationship with God and my dependency um, really, really grew, um, during, during this period. And that's why it's so evident in the book. And I honestly, I mean, I, I, the volume is, is as high as it's ever been on, on my faith. And it's an alternative faith book, right? It's not evangelical. It's not in your face. Um, I think the message that I want to convey to people is like, man, life is hard. You're going to go through seasons. We're all going to go through them. And um, good luck if you're not holding on to something bigger than yourself. And I don't care what it is, right? right? Uh, what your spiritual belief is. But um, I think that's the most critical thing you have in your life and the most constant thing you have to, to help you navigate um, the, the challenges that will present themselves inevitably to all of us. Yeah, I was thinking about the concept of adversity, uh, you're flying into the wind. Um, and all of us, I think for the most part, don't want adversity in our life. You know, you, you, you'd be hard pressed to find somebody and say, man, I'm really looking forward to a hard day today. <laughs> but like when you go to an airport or something, um, the airport actually is looking for the adversity. You'll see a windsock that is trying to help people see where the, where the wind is coming from. And, and it's because of that you wouldn't think of taking off without first knowing which way the, the wind's blowing and then you go into the wind and that makes all kinds of sense to us. But when it comes to us, uh, per, uh, personally, we don't, we don't look for the wind sock, you know, we hope the wind sock is, you know, you don't want to see it, but. Yeah, or, it's, or it's behind you. Or it's and, behind uh, you. But, you know, and I think that's, that's a great point. Hey, nobody wants to struggle. Nobody wants it hard. Um, but it is, it is biblical that that is, that's really what you need in your life to ascend. Um, and this book is about, hey, it's inevitable, it's going to happen. How do, I, how do I manage those moments in my life effectively and not get derailed? And I think as, as fighter pilots, you know, probably our best and most unique skill is our ability to take in copious amounts of information at in, in, in rapid speed, right? The fourth dimension is time. <clears throat> and ultimately, our ability to prioritize it and I think at the, at the core, that's the beauty of flying into the wind is you don't have to be a fighter pilot, right? W woke up this morning, we all did, and modern life is like drinking through a fire hose for everybody every day, mm -hmm. right? There's more to do. You're constantly bombarded with schedules and information and all of this kind of stuff. But if you're not intentional uh, about prioritizing what's important in your life, i.e. a code of living, um, man, your, your, your life is going to live itself and you'll wake up 10 years from now. I promise you this. And everybody will be like, man, where'd the last 10 years go? Mm -hmm. 
the beauty of the way that that I do live in the code of living that's outlined in this book is you will be able to answer that question and say, I, you know, that, that went really fast. I don't have a solution for that. I mean, time is going to keep on trucking, but this book provides an awesome solution on, hey, I'm going to be my best self every day in small increments and broke the book down into, I call them lines of effort. It's a military term, uh, LOEs. LOEs, yeah. Um, that, you know, I execute on a, on a daily basis to ensure that, um, that, you know, you find fulfillment, really. Um, and, and you're living your best self and you're not just reacting to this just ambush of schedule and information that attacks us um, each and every day. And uh, so my wife reminds me, um, you know, every time that you say no, you're actually saying yes to the stuff that matters. And right. um, that's, you know, I talk about this in, in the book, um, in the relationship section, which is the most important part of every one of our lives. Um, there's a beautiful study that's been going on for 90 plus years by Harvard, and it's actually a study on happiness. But the, the only common thread to finding happiness, I define it as fulfillment in, in life of these people. It's not money, it's not fame, it's not health, um, it's relationships. And there's a whole chapter in this book called Force Multiply, and it's about building your life squadron and prioritizing level one, level two, level three relationships. And so often we look at the marriage crisis in this country, we, you know, we look at the you know, emotional state of the brokenness of so many relationships, and it's because you're not prioritizing and defending the sanctity of these, what I call level three relationships in your life that really matter, you know, with your kids, with your closest friends, with your spouse, um, with these people that will, you know, be your confidants because you're reactive and not intentional. Last night we went to my wife's birthday was yesterday. And so we went out to eat and um, <laughs> I'm sure you've never done this, but as she's speaking to me, I'm looking right through, I'm looking at her, but I'm really looking right through her and thinking about something else. And I caught myself, uh, she was just going on about stuff that was important to her. And she was just, you know, talking about the, her day. At, uh, she's a, uh, a para at the teacher's aid at the school. And I caught myself and I was like, whoa, wait a minute. I didn't hear, I haven't heard a word she said in the last 30 seconds, you know, or last minute even. And yeah, it really, so. huh? The bro code, it's not a good one. <laughs> so I was just like, oh, I got to get back into this. Relationships are so important and it's a lot of work. It is, it is. And it's intentional, but it is the, it is the greatest ROI of our lives. And, and it is being lost. As you look at the dinner table, we were out to dinner for my daughter's 16th birthday last night. And I look around and I would just see people just not, no conversation, a family of five just buried in their devices. I mean, like, I'm right. sorry, what the, what the hell is going on on Facebook that is more important than the four people around this table um, in our lives? And it's, it is these small decisions that write the legacy of your life. And it, that, I, I think that's one of the beauties of this book. It is hyper-focused on the now and winning the smallest battles um, that culminate to, to, to live a life of fulfillment. It's all the little choices we make. That's yeah, so true. Um, you know, the, uh, when I first read the book, when I, when I was, uh, started off in your first, uh, for, not the foreword, but the, the first chapter, I think it was, you were talking about the incident where, with the gas tank, and you said as you took off, um, you took off with more th thrusts, 29,000 pounds of thrust um, that was more than the entire grid on the, at the Daytona 500. And when I read that, I was just like, okay, I'm done. You know, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> two awesome. experiences of that, you know? Yeah. Um, that was so incredible. What, uh, what's one of the biggest takeaways from the, what's the job of this book? If this book has a purpose and uh, what, what's the, uh, what's the job of this book that you see? It's I, I, I so the number one regret on people's deathbed is I wish I would have lived a life true to myself, not the life that others expected of me. I'm gonna say that one more time. I wish I would have lived a life true to myself, not the life that others expected of me. Um, I think that's way up there on 
in the book in helping people walk through their own code of living and define a blueprint by which they're going to live every day. Um, and for, for me, I, you know, I'm a faith-based guy, um, bringing people closer to God and the stuff that really matters in their life. And um, that word fulfillment, and I spell it capital F-U-L-L, full. Um, you, whatever you put in yourself is going to be what fills you up. And people just, you know, it's so easy to make bad choices. I mean, whether it's social media or turning on, I don't care if it's CNN or Fox, I don't care. That is not filling you up. If you're eating a bucket of fried chicken and drinking four beers and, you know. Easy now, on, easy now. Right, turning on something that you shouldn't be watching on the internet. And you wonder why you wake up the next morning and you're like, man, I just don't feel very good about myself. It's that simple. You fill yourself up with the right stuff. And it can change your life in extraordinary ways. And we talk about this concept of volition in the book, which is really the trigger for the whole book because it's the power of choice. And you look at the choice, choices we make, and I say every choice follows a logical path. It starts with, I won't do that. I can't do that. I'd like to. I'll try. I can. I will. It's really simple. If you can make it to I will, nothing can stop you in your life. And that is whatever you want to do, whatever you want to stop doing. Um, and uh, we make lots of excuses, right? You know, what's going on in our lives, the, where we're from, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this when this is all set up and, you know, I'm going to move to a, you know, coastal climate when I got enough money in my bank account, or I'm going to, you know, find the right person to live with when I've got this, whatever it is. We are a prisoner of common assumption, and it's our own assumption so often, right? Not the world that we blame it on. And right. getting to I will is, again, this, this spark that can just light off um, your life. But, you know, walking in and understanding that it's not an overnight deal, right? It's, it is intentional, painful. Um, I don't know if it's painful is the right, right can word. Can be. <laughs> um, but, but intentional, right? Every, every day we, we want it now. And I, anecdotally, so I've got a new show that just came out on Fox Nation yesterday, same title called Fly Into the Wind, where I sit down with some of the, you know, most recognized athletes, celebrities of, of our day. And what I have learned interviewing these people is they have achieved some of the greatest moments, you know, in sport and, and or life. Um, but their greatest skill is how they have navigated when things didn't go their way, right? I mean, it's like this, these both guardrails, like we look at Dara Torres as the, you know, oldest Olympian, you know, ever at age 41, or you look at a Herschel Walker and Urban Meyer, who's won three national championships. These people are so unbelievably good and they understand that their lives are defined by what they do when it doesn't go their way. And that is what has led them to these supernova moments in their life. And I talk about that, you know, a bunch in, in this book as, as well. But um, again, it's, it's flying into the wind, right? And embracing, hey, this is the way life is, um, but your life can be extraordinary. This book is about uh, hope and eliminating what I call parasitic drag in your life, the stuff that holds us back from getting to where we want to be. And it's it's a very honest book. It's one of those you got to slow down to speed up. Ultimately, mm -hmm. it was, we, it's a great fighter pilot analogy we use. Um, but really inventorying at the end of the day, where, where, where am I, Scott? Um, where do I want to be? And this is a beautiful roadmap. Um, you know, 80% solution, I would say, for anybody. Um, it's unique to my life um, to get you to that place, to looking yourself in the mirror and uh, knowing in your heart of heart that you're on a journey to becoming the person you know you could be, you should be, and God wants you to be. You do a good job of um, showing people how to um, stack the deck in their favor and eliminate the parasitic drag by a couple of, you know, just you know, eating right, sleeping well, exercise, you know, a lot of the stuff that we've heard, and, uh, but you, you back it up with some, you, you talk about uh, vegan or vegetarian. So yesterday I uh, ordered a salad and uh, something else. So if, if no one else has told you that uh, they're listening, at least I am. So 
Uh, I had eggs and spinach this morning, so I'm 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 checking this thing out. You know, I'm let's see how it works. So but, Scott, I'm telling you, it's simple fulfillment. What are you putting in your tank, physically, spiritually, emotionally? Who do you have around you? What are you eating? What are you drinking? You know, it's what are you watching? It this is a linear equation, and it works. And it's not. I mean, I'm and I went out and I had two beers last night and. Um, you know, I, part of my daughter's dessert, this isn't about, you know, total deprivation. It's about right. a lifestyle of an 80% of the time, man, fill yourself up with the right stuff. Give yourself 20%, do whatever the heck you want. Um, would you call it a but, flexitarian or something like that? Yeah. Flexitarian. Yeah. <laughs> people think I've made that up, but you know, I'm <laughs> vegan about 80% of the day. I am until about five 30 at night and yeah. uh, then I'm to do whatever I want. We've got uh, about two minutes left here, and I just wanted to uh, mention a couple. I'll mention the book here at the end in the show, but because it is Veterans Day, um, uh, 13 is a special number, uh, the folds of the flag and the uh, 12 apostles and Jesus, and 13 is a big number and uh, flying to the wind. So I thought what if you want to, if it's okay with you, I, uh, I don't like to, I have an off, uh, a hard time saying thank you to veterans because it's like it, it doesn't even say it i mean i don't think there's any words that can that can say uh thanks to the people past and present who have served our country you know i mean it's the ultimate sacrifice that they all are all willing to make so i thought if it's okay with you um that here i'll set the time if we could just take 13 seconds of silence and just in honor of the veterans, um, past and present, is that all right with you? Be honored. And the time starts now. All right. So Scott, 13 is, a, is my God number, right? You mentioned there's 12 apostles, Jesus number 13. Um, and the origins of the numbers 13 stand for new beginnings. I think that's a perfect way to wrap up, right? My hope and prayer um, is that this book, Fly Into the Wind, will help people um, find new beginnings um, in their life. And if they're winning, great. They'll win more. If they're like I was, just you know, beat down in a really hard place, um, but this helps you fight your way out of it. And uh, every day we wake up, it is the day the Lord has made. It is an opportunity for a new beginning. And so here's to a new beginning. And uh, I just pray that this book finds its place to the, to the right people. And, you know, plug, you can get it anywhere they sell books, right? From, uh, from Amazon to Barnes and Noble, be it Sam's, Walmart. Um, and it goes back to support Folds of Honor and the families that, uh, that, we, uh, that we help. So even a better reason. So I got my little... I'm a wingman. I, know. I noticed your pen. I love it, brother. I love it. I'm a wingman. So uh, yeah, the, so the book comes out November 17. And uh, so you can pre-order it now, like uh, Dan said, wherever books are sold. Um, and then the show, uh, Fox Nation, Fly Into the Wind is uh, on Fox now. It was it premiered last night. So be sure to avail yourself to that. Well, Colonel Dan, it's been a Awesome pleasure, honor having you and getting to see you again. This is like our third year in a row that we've connected in some way. And so uh, that's cool. Synchronicity, chance with a purpose, my brother. God's using both of us to, uh, to do his work. So thank you for believing in me. And I was honored to uh, spend time on your podcast. So for Lieutenant Colonel Dan Rooney, this is Scott Townsend. Thanks for watching and listening to Scott Townsend Show. Have a great day and we'll talk to you later. Townsend Show is a Dietzo Man production. For more episodes, visit the Scott Townsend Show YouTube channel, listen on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.